Give me your overall thoughts on the Eastern Conference Finals with the Miami Heat going up against the Boston Celtics. Well, I mean, these two teams know each other very well. Kyle already said it, as did I. Third time in four years they faced each other. Jimmy Butler has been a part of each and every one of those matchups, and he just changes the culture when it comes to Miami basketball. Jason Tatum has emerged as an incredible star, uh, stup- superstar. Jalen Brown as well, incredible two-way superstar. But the Miami Heat have something that a lot of teams don't have, and that's drive, desire, the passion for it. Despite losing Victor Oladipo, Tyler Hero, Jimmy getting hurt, they have found ways to win with the supporting cast that they have. Seven undrafted free agents are a part of this roster. A bunch of no-name players, respectfully, in terms of like being drafted, hype out of college, you know, free agency. They're just they're undrafted people. So there is no history behind them. They are finding ways to win with people like Gabe Vincent, Max Struess, Duncan Robinson. I mean, Caleb Martin, I'm just thinking overall like some of these random players that are just going over my head. I mean, Bam out of bio has stepped up the last couple of days. He was drafted. I'm just saying in terms of personnel that they still have going. Obviously, Jimmy Butler is the leader in the catalyst. Kyle Lowry was considered washed by me and a bunch of other people, and he has stepped up in the last couple of games in the playoffs. They have found ways to get things done despite being the final seed and the injuries and the question marks of whether or not that Jimmy Butler was going to bring a championship to Miami. And that possibility still stands that he can. The thing for me is Boston was clearly the better team in both series against Atlanta and Philly, but they found ways to make miscues. Now, whether that was Jason Tatum going cold from the field, whether that was the the remainder of the Celtics not being able to help between Marcus Smart having a bad night, maybe Brogdon had a bad night, whatever the case may be, maybe defensive liabilities, mistakes on the turnover side. Boston should have been blowing these teams out. Like That Atlanta series should have been a sweep, if not a gentleman sweep at max. This Philly series, they blew Philly out in two out of the seven games, and it took James Harden going for 45 and 42 in close games for Philly to get those wins. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, Miami hasn't taken a night off. Every single game Miami has played in, wins and losses, has been close outside of maybe one against Milwaukee, which was, I think, game two, and that was without Giannis, where they lost by 20 points or so. I'm trying to think how in the hell Miami has been this competitive. And again, it comes back to mindset. They want it. They know they're an eight seed and they have nothing to lose. They know that they're led by a bunch of random players. They understand that Jimmy Butler isn't the, at the level of a Kevin Durant, a Steph Curry, a LeBron James. But when he gets in the playoffs, playoff Jimmy is a whole nother person. He didn't have the greatest statistical second round, but the ankle injury limited him. He didn't play one of those games. And obviously, New York played incredible defense on Jimmy Butler to make other players beat them, in which the Heat did exactly that. So when you look at the matchup, Yes, you have Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown that are going to guard Jimmy Butler. Yes, you have Robert Williams that's probably going to guard uh, Bam Adebayo. But can Boston's role players find a way to compete with the role players of the Heat? Because again, these players don't have the contracts, the names, the endorsements, um, the incentives, all the things that the Celtics players have. Marcus Smart, former Defensive Player of the Year. Malcolm Brogdon, uh, Sixth Man of the Year. Obviously, you talk about uh, Jalen Brown, one of the better two-way players, and again, somebody who is now eligible for a Supermax contract. Jason Tatum, uh, first-team All-NBA, 51 points in Game 7. Yeah, Gabe Vincent and Caleb Martin at the guard position. They're carving it up. Duncan Robinson at one point was deemed unplayable, and he's come in and he's provided valuable minutes and hit some big shots for the Heat. Kyle Larry was on the starting lineup and then moved over. Kevin Love, a washed-up 34-year-old man who, who, who was getting no burn in Cleveland, didn't want to play anymore, wanted to just absorb the contract, gets there and is, is, can be a double-double machine, spreads the floor. There are more... I think, like, I think Miami has more of an incentive. They have more reason to want to win this to continue to prove people wrong. And obviously, Eric Spolscher is one of the best coaches in the NBA. So... I expect this series to be highly competitive, especially because this is the third time they're playing each other in such a short span of years. Three and four. Remember that. Three three series in four years. 
I wouldn't be surprised if series go seven, to be honest. I really wouldn't because of how well they know each other, because of how dynamic both teams are. And because, quite frankly, I said this in the first series with Miami and uh, with Miami and Milwaukee, there was no way that this offense was going to be able to keep up this pace. Miami was one of the worst offensive teams in the regular season. And they have found a way to shoot efficiently from the field, get to the free throw line, and play good defense. This has continued in the first two rounds, so I expect it to continue against Boston. If Jimmy Butler can get anywhere between 25, 28, almost 30 points a game, get people involved like he has, and the supporting cast continues to shoot lights out, I'm not asking for 20 points from random people. If Caleb gets you 10, if Struess gets you 12, if uh, Duncan gives you uh, 15 off the bench, that's a winning formula and a contributing piece all around. They just need to play good defense because we all know that Jason and Jalen can go for 30 a pop on any given night, but we also can see that Jason Tatum sometimes can kind of get a little ahead of himself and have a really bad night. So I really can't make a definitive decision as to who will win, but when it comes to who I want to see win, I want to see Miami, man. I love Jimmy Butler. I keep saying it every single year. Jimmy is just a different kind of person. He's just a, an energizer bunny, a person that will go to war with you, fight with you, and get in your face and not care who you are. That energy is contagious. That is the type of energy you want in a locker room in a playoff atmosphere. That's the guy you want to go to war with. And in Boston, you have that with a great group of veterans. But again, once one of them has kind of like an off night and the other one has to carry the show, and in recent memory, at least in this postseason, outside of Jason's 51-point uh, game, Jalen has had to carry a lot of the load because there are nights when Jason Tatum just is completely off or is just not in rhythm. So if Boston has one of those off nights, can Miami capitalize? If Jason and Jalen go off together, can Miami find a way to keep up? I don't know. But I'm going to go with the Miami Heat in seven. I think that they're a team that get, can, uh, can rally behind a person like Jimmy. I think they're, someone, they're, they're a team that has bought into the message that Spolstra has delivered. I think the culture in Miami has completely shifted since Jimmy has got there. And uh, I think that we are going to see the eighth seed beat the two seed. And I think that Miami is going to advance to the finals this year. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Wait, when you said that you were really wanting the Heat to win this series, I had to do something but just smile. Just because, like, I could totally understand uh, where that sentiment comes from. And uh, it's no doubt in my mind that Miami is going to be the underdog in this series. Oh, yeah. But I still think that they could really make this a good series. Um, it's like what I said in the uh, Western Conference preview. You know, to me, I got the Nuggets winning that series in six. But honestly, I just want a good competitive series. That's what everybody wants. And I think that the Heat could really give the Celtics a run for their money in this series. But I am going to go against you on this one. I am going to pick the Celtics in this one. I still see the series potentially going six games. Could it go seven? Maybe so. I, I think it's going to depend on a few factors, though. One of the things that I'm going to really pay attention to when it comes to Miami is how effective is Jimmy going to be? Because, you know, he was lights out against Milwaukee in that first series. And then he suffers that ankle roll in the first game of that New York Knicks series. And you could tell he was definitely limited in that series. And I would say the next best performance that they got from him uh, was in the final game of that series where the Heat were able to close that series out in six games to get to this point of where they're at now. So this series doesn't start until Wednesday. There's going to be a good chance that Jimmy's going to get some more time to be able to recover from that ankle injury, get some rehab, um, allow the trainers to be able to maximize the amount of time that he could use that to rehab that ankle injury. And I think as, as long as he's around 90 Maybe 95% is pushing it, but I think if they get Jimmy to about 90% of where he's at compared to where he was before he suffered that ankle injury, I think that Jimmy has a good chance to pop off for some 30, maybe even some 35-point performances against the Celtics. It's not going to be easy knowing what Boston can do defensively, but I still think that if he can get into a rhythm, even if Boston's playing good defense against him, those mid-range jumpers, once they start falling down for Jimmy, 
that could serve him well and serve Miami well uh, going into this series. I think another part for Miami that you have to look at is I think that Miami actually has the coaching advantage over Boston in this series just because Eric Spolstra has been to multiple NBA finals. And despite the fact that the Heat have not had Tyler Hero since the first round of the playoffs, they deal with Jimmy Butler dealing with a ankle injury early in the series against the Knicks. And yet Eric Spolster is able to put the right guys in the right positions at the proper times and be able to overcome the obstacles that have been placed in front of Miami just from an injury aspect perspective and rise to the occasion to get to this point of where they are in the Eastern Conference Finals. That is really a credit to Eric Spolstra and the coaching staff being able to know the situation at hand, be able to adjust, and still succeed. And they've done a fantastic job in that regard. You compare that to the Celtics in Joe Missoula. This is Missoula's first year as a head coach in the NBA. And I will say that he's done a fantastic job in getting the Celtics back to the Eastern Conference Finals. And I will say the one thing that I think Missoula may have over Eric Spolstra is just that mindset, the intensity that he brings to the team. Because there were plenty of points throughout the series against the 76ers where we got to see what Missoula's coaching style was like, whether it was at the post-game podium, whether it was during the game, during a timeout. He's very intense, and he's not afraid to be able to show some emotions, whether it's on the court or even post-game at the podium. And I think that's one thing that could really serve Boston well, is even though that Missoula has some playoff inexperience as a head coach, I think he can make it up just for the overall intensity that he brings with his overall mentality. He's a very intense coach, and I think it really does put Boston into a situation where they don't take it for granted when it comes to the opportunity that they have presented against them. And then when it comes down to the player matchups, I think overall, I think Boston is more well-equipped to get to the NBA Finals than Miami at this point, just because Miami is dinged up. Uh, Boston is not as injury-prone compared to Miami throughout these playoffs so far. Now, obviously, things can change. Things happen. Guys suffer injuries. Uh, in these playoff series and you know Boston could have the injury bug show up at the worst time here and really affect them in this series but it just seems to me that Boston is the healthier team even though the Boston had the longer series I think they, they could be able to overcome that despite playing a full seven games against the 76ers I think they could round into form relatively quickly win some of these playoff games at home and it's going to come down to whether or not they can go on the road and beat the Heat in Miami. I think if they could do that early on in the series, I think it will serve them well. But it's going to be a dogfight in the series just because Miami, they have been here before. They've they've only been three years removed from going to the NBA Finals. And, you know, granted, the teams have looked a little bit different compared to when these teams met in 2020 in the Eastern Conference Finals. There's still some carryover from the teams last year in the Eastern Conference Finals. But, when it comes to this matchup, it's going to come down to who's going to hit their shots. And, you know, can Boston effectively knock down three point shots that they were able to in that game seven against the 76ers when they go up against the Heat? Can the Heat be able to get these top tier performances from their role players if Jimmy is not going bonkers scoring 35, 40 points a game? You know, that means guys like Kyle Lowry, Max Struess, uh, Bam Adebayo, Duncan Robinson. These guys have been playing relatively well so far. But going up against a really good defense in Boston that could prove to be a challenge uh, when they go against each other when this series gets kicked off. But really just to round this out, you know, I I want a good competitive series. That's what every NBA fan wants. That's what I want as well. And I think when it's all said and done, I just have more faith that the Celtics will be able to get over the hump and and fight against a really tough Miami Heat team. This might be one of those number eight seeds that is, it really kind of throws a paradox out there simply just because, you know, typically we don't see number eight seeds make it all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals. Yet the the Heat have found a way 
to be able to get to this point and they've made the most of their opportunities and I don't think that they're going to let it go uh, knowing that an NBA Finals trip is on the line here. So overall, going to be a good series. It's going to come down to the superstars making their plays, the role players making their plays. I think more times than not, I think the Celtics are going to be the ones making the plays at the proper times to be able to get over the hump and eventually get to the NBA Finals. So I got the Celtics winning this series in six games, but I will leave the door open for the possibility of the Celtics winning this series in seven as well. But it's going to be a great series no matter how it plays out.